tragedy and Russian military barbarism unfolding before our eyes in Ukraine is horrifying, and the road to it was partly paved with two decades of misplaced optimism, appeasement, and Western leaders too eager to look the other way when it came to Vladimir Putin. While born from, no doubt, a well-intentioned desire to welcome Russia into the global community, that desire seemed to often block out the obvious warning signs. One of Putin's first actions as president in early 2000 was to level the Chechen capital city of Grozny, so much so that the UN was reportedly still calling it the most destroyed city on earth years later. Thousands of civilians were killed. And how did the US respond? With stern warnings and a friendly presidential summit. I think that uh, the United States can, can do business with this man. What I have seen of him so far <clears throat> indicates to me that he's capable of being a very strong and effective and straightforward leader. President Clinton was the first American leader to see a potential partner in Putin, but he was far from the last. I looked the man in the eye. I found him to be very straightforward and trustworthy. I was able to um, get a sense of his soul. Amid warnings from the likes of Senator John McCain and Garry Kasparov that Putin could simply not be trusted, President Bush nonetheless pushed on for a new beginning with Russia, despite Grozny, despite the 2004 poisoning of pro-Western Ukrainian presidential candidate Viktor Yushchenko, who survived the poisoning and suspected the Kremlin was to blame, despite the 2006 death by radiation poisoning of Putin critic Alexander Litvinenko. You may succeed in silencing one man, Litvinenko said from his deathbed. But the howl of protest from around the world will reverberate, Mr. Putin, in your ears for the rest of your life. But tragically, that howl evaporated. The UK responded to a brazen assassination on its soil by expelling four Russian diplomats. That's it. In 2008, Putin, emboldened, invaded neighboring Georgia using the pretense of protecting the rights of Russian-speaking separatists, which is now his playbook. Russia has invaded a sovereign neighboring state and threatens a democratic government elected by its people. Such an action is unacceptable in the 21st century. Unacceptable. So how did President Bush punish Putin for this bloody invasion of a sovereign nation? Nothing. Not even economic sanctions. Something former Bush National Security Advisor Stephen Hadley told me six years later was a mistake. In 2008, Ukrainian-born tax advisor Sergei Magnitsky alleged massive corruption by the Russian government. He was thrown in jail while Bush was president, and he died in prison not long after Obama's famous or infamous Russian reset began. So willing to work with Putin, often despite NATO's fears. Remember the 2012 Obama hot mic moment with Putin's short-term successor, Dmitry Medvedev, about Putin's objections? to U.S. missile defense systems protecting NATO allies? This is my last election, please. Yeah. Uh, After my election, I have more flexibility. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. I transmit this information to Vladimir and Mr. Obama's opponent that election insisted that Russia was the U.S.'s number one geopolitical foe, and Obama mocked him. The 1980s are now calling to ask for their foreign policy back. Obama's flexibility was indeed transmitted to Vladimir. And two years later, Putin ordered the annexation of Crimea and started a civil war in eastern Ukraine, providing arms to separatists who, in July 2014, used a Russian missile system to shoot down Malaysian Airlines Flight 17, killing 298 innocent people. The world responded to the annexation of Crimea and that downed passenger plane in 2014 with some relatively weak sanctions and by kicking Russia out of the G8. Here's Obama's Director of National Intelligence, James Clapper, just a few days ago. Do you wish that Obama had done harsher, stricter sanctions uh, in 2014? Uh, yes, I do. I wish we, as an administration, ha had uh, been more aggressive in, in 2014. Syria came next with Putin siding with genocidal maniac Bashar al-Assad, Russian jets using cluster bombs to attack hospitals to kill civilians. In many ways, seemingly a dry run for what we're seeing now in Ukraine. And again, no serious action 
from the West in response. Putin's opponents have a way of falling out of windows. In 2015, Putin opponent Boris Nemtsov was assassinated brazenly right near the Kremlin. Bolder still, never deterred, Putin ordered the 2016 interference campaign in the U.S. election. This was followed by some more sanctions and expelled Russian diplomats, but still nothing really with teeth, nothing truly punishing. It was an interference campaign that came amidst a candidate who not only admired Putin, but openly called for his election help. Russia, if you're listening, I hope you're able to find the 30,000 emails that are missing. A president who his own aides feared would withdraw the U.S. from NATO, who saw moral equivalence between the United States and Russia. Putin's a killer. You think our country's so innocent? A man who sided with Putin over his own U.S. intelligence community about the 2016 election interference campaign. My people came to me, Dan Coates came to me and some others. They said they think it's Russia. Uh, I have uh, President Putin. Uh, he just said it's not Russia. I will say this. I don't see any reason why it would be. This was followed by the poisoning of former Russian double agent Sergei Skripal and his daughter in Britain and the 2020 poisoning, then imprisonment of Russian opposition leader Alexei Navalny. And this was the American president. I do get along with, uh, with uh, President Putin. I mean, honestly, if you were Putin, would you think there were any real limits to what you could get away with? I mean, it's easy to see why he thought this time would be no different. Throughout our history, we've learned this lesson. When dictators do not pay a price for their aggression, they cause more chaos. President Biden is right. Dictators who do not pay a price for aggression continue causing more chaos. But may I ask, have we actually learned that lesson?